This video will show you how to use the Perseus Digital Library to help with your Greek and Latin translation homework. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, the Perseus Digital Library has been around for a long time, uh, and they've been digitizing a lot of primary Latin Greek texts. They've also been digitizing a lot of images and other uh, resources for ancient history and classics. But today we're just going to look at one part of this website, and that is the part that will help us with our Greek and Latin translations. So from the Perseus Digital uh, Library homepage, we're going to collect here at the top left, uh, our second option says Collections and Texts. All right, and what are our first options here in Browse the Collections is Greek and Roman materials. So that's also what we're interested in. Now, this is going to bring up a fairly lengthy list. It's got not only uh, ancient authors, and both Greek and Roman, but it also has mixed in modern commentaries, uh, Alan and Greeno's New Latin Grammar, all of these things mixed up together. And for ancient authors, uh, say you're interested in and Docides, well, you click on this triangle next to the name and it brings up here uh, we see that we have four speeches by Endocrates uh, not only in Greek but also an English translation available but say we're interested in something specific rather than scrolling through this entire list we can go to the search bar at the top and let's just look for Caesar's Gallic War so I'm just typing in Caesar and Gallic into the search bar and it's going to search through the entire list of all the texts that are available on here and it brings up a huge uh, list and in the left hand column here you'll see that there are lots of things that you're not sure are necessarily what you're looking for you wanted Caesar's text on the Gallic Wars itself where he Caesar is the author but instead we see things like Flavius Josephus the Wars of the Jews Apian the Civil Wars and that's because the terms Gallic and Caesar show up in these texts. So that's not specifically what we're looking for, but in the right-hand column here, under relevant works, if we click show, it will show us all the works where Caesar is an author. Uh, it also shows us Plutarch's Life of Caesar. So it shows us more specifically what we are looking for in this case, not a not where Caesar and Gallic show up in a text, but when they're actually the works themselves. So that helps us a lot. So we can see uh, Caesar de Bello Gallico in Latin, and we also see Caesar commentaries on the Civil War, and uh, Julius Caesar, the Gallic War, English translations here. So we're going to go right to the Latin. This is a very common text that a lot of people translate um, <clears throat> in second year Latin. Now, as you can see here at the top, we have these bars that allow us to navigate by book, by chapter within a book, and also by section within those chapters. You can also choose to type those numbers uh, in here to also search full text. Now, and if you're reading this from beginning to end, you can also just use this arrow key to advance to the next section of the text when you're done, say, with this small three-line section. Now the real advantage of using uh, the Perseus project is that you can hyperlink from these words to get uh, you know full parsing of everything that the word is about. So here we have the form analysis. Uh, I clicked on incolent in the text and then it brings up this is from the verb incolo to be at home, abide, dwell. And it also shows us that incolent is the third plural present indicative active. Now, that is pretty obvious, but maybe we clicked on this verb not because we didn't know what the form of the verb was, but because we wanted to look up uh, a dictionary entry. So you can click on the show lexicon entry in the Lewis and Short Dictionary. And that loads up a full dictionary entry for this, showing one, literally, uh, to cultivate, but uh, transfiguratively to dwell or abide in, to inhabit. So that's 
gives us more uh, ideas of where this is being used, alternative definitions, and things like that. All without having to look at your screen and a dictionary at the same time. So it's all centralized. So I'm going to close this and you can do this for every single word of this text. So it's an incredibly useful tool for getting through lots and lots of Latin text very quickly and you never get tripped up over the what the form of the word is you can see it and start to piece together how it's fitting for you in your translation for when you get to class all right now as I said you can use this for both Latin and Greek so why don't we use this to look up a Greek text uh, how about Xenophon Anabasis So I'm up at the top right search bar again, I'm clicking and we're searching through all the various texts that are available on Perseus. And again, it shows us uh, things showing up in Diodorus Siculus's library, uh, Xenophon's and Abbasids itself, but let's just go to the relevant works in the right hand column, click on show. And here it shows us all the different things uh, where Xenophon is the author. and of course we're interested in the Anabasis. And as you can see here, uh, Perseus takes full advantage in its newest version of, <clears throat> of Unicode Greek text, so it will display without a problem on any newer browser. If you're using an older browser, you can click on the Help tab in Perseus, and they do have ways of explaining how to install a Greek font so that you can view Greek on this website. But if you're using up-to-date everything, you should be seeing Greek right now. Now, again, it's just like the Latin text we were looking at uh, before, but say we were, I don't know, we wanted to look up the word hupoptue. All right, so here it goes. Uh, it's from the verb hupoptuo, and we see that it's the third singular imperfect indicative active. And again, by clicking on this LSJ link, it pulls up a full definition to be suspicious or um, you know or to suspect guess or suppose which is the correct translation in uh, this <clears throat> text so this is again a very quick way of going through a lot of text not getting caught up on very difficult or awkward forms uh, and being able to translate more effectively uh, with your time. So that's just been a quick lesson of how to use the Perseus project for your own translation homework in Latin and in Greek. And as you can see it's very useful. There are all sorts of other things that you can learn to do with Perseus. I'll show you one last one. If you click on all search options here again at the top right and here in the right hand column you can see uh, the word study tool and here it also shows you how to enter a text into Greek or into Latin so I don't know what if uh, the word I was looking for was uh, gignontai you don't even have to put accents in here if you're looking and here it shows me exactly what I typed in the third plural present indicative uh, it's a deponent verb, but they put middle passive here because that's the, what the form would look like in the middle passive. And then you can look up the dictionary entry. So if you don't want to actually uh, hyperlink from a text or if a text that you're working from isn't on Perseus, you can still take advantage of this word study tool uh, for your own homework needs. And that's all I have to say about the Perseus project right now. Uh, it's something that you'll get very familiar with and something that will help you with your own homework needs. And uh, get out there and translate. Good luck.